All right, guys, please help me figure this out. What is the first limit? And not only what it equals to, but what is this limit talking about? Why would somebody be considering this limit? Yes, ma uh, mailing list, uh, the email that I sent you, right? Now, the question was not about the mailing list, but really about uh, sine H over H. What's the limit equal to, please? Okay, first limit is one. One second. First limit is one, because what is this limit talking about? It is talking about nothing more than nothing more than uh, the derivative of sine x when x is equal to zero, right? And what about the second limit, please? Just limit number two, please. Zero. Everybody sees why it's zero, guys? We, we talked about it. It's zero. And you can see that this is the definition of the derivative of cosine x where x is zero. What is this limit? Tangent h over h, what is that limit? So Anna says zero. Okay, it's tangent h over h, guys, so that I am, uh, uh, well, that's what we are talking about. Yes, Mariam, possibly you're not on my list. So if you haven't received emails from me, guys, uh, what you should do is write your first name, last name, and uh, that you are in the morning section, and I will add you to the mailing list, good? And again, don't worry about it. Worry about one and only one thing. Guys, if you know the material, you will not fail this class. Understand? Worry about knowing the material. Everything else comes. Yes, Junaid, but uh, uh, I said message your first and last uh, name to my email address on the syllabus. And I will add you to the mailing list if you are not there. Say that you are from uh, um, from morning section. Okay, Francis, what do you not understand? Which uh, which of those? Just uh, number one and number two. So, what's about number one? We mentioned this in a previous lecture. This looks like the derivative of sine. Correct. Here again, what's the derivative of sine by definition? This is limit as h goes to zero of sine x plus h minus sine x divided by h. This is the definition for all of them. Yes? So if I plug x equal to zero, then what do I get? So in particular, if x equal to zero, that becomes limit as h goes to zero of sine of zero plus h minus sine zero divided by h, which is the same as limit where h goes to zero of 
sine h, sine of zero is zero, sine h divided by h. Good. Now that is the derivative of sine. And how do we know that this is equal to uh, one? We only had a heuristic uh, way of uh, figuring this out. If this is the unit circle, remember guys? If this is the unit circle, then what? Then if H is going down, then what happens is that here is my sign. And here is my H. Right, Who is, which is bigger? You can see that the magnitude of H is bigger than the magnitude of sine H, do you agree? But in the limit, they become of the same length. In the limit, they get more and more like the same length. Do you see why, guys? It is a bit tricky. The reason why is that, uh, is that this circle can be thought of if you were to zoom in, this is uh, the segment of the circle that you see emanating. This is the segment of the circle. It's beca it becomes like a perpendicular line to the x-axis and this is where you will see sine. They are not just getting smaller, right? Obviously both sine h and h are getting smaller and approaching zero. The thing that I hope you can see is that they are becoming of the same length. And we will give, again, I'm hoping you really are eager for that, we will give a rigorous explanation of why that limit is what it is, okay? This involves squeeze theorem, which is what I will explain maybe even today, depending on how fast we will finish this lecture. But I would like you to uh, intuitively feel that the answer is equal to one. Sine h over h approaches one, good? This is called trigonometry. And the topic is something you find in my, you know, I post those lectures. You can just read from there and you can see in, uh, in the book. You see guys, I have a very strong uh, suspicion that, that a book is never opened and the lectures uh, are never read, which is not good, which is the reason that uh, this is slow, which is the reason why exam one and exam two are so close together in the final. Good. If you cannot understand a material like this, you should try reading uh, uh, the calculus for dummies. Maybe it helps, but you should strive to climb to this particular uh, level. And the final is conceptual, so understand that. Good, so sine h over h, it's one. Now, I mentioned what happens with cosine, right? In the same picture, I can kind of see what would happen to cosine because of this diagonal line. Uh, I see that this orange segment, you see this orange segment here, this is one minus cosine H, okay? And uh, we have a triangle. Do you see that the uh, pink line segment is also going to strive to H? It's gonna be of the same length as H. The pink line segment is still shorter than H, but uh, in the limit, the hypotenuse of the right triangle becomes like the vertical side of the right triangle, making uh, the horizontal segment compared to H insignificant, going to zero. Do you understand what we have? We're getting a picture of a triangle, uh, of a right triangle that is rather distorted. And of course, you might not be satisfied with such explanations. Those are sort of intuitive explanations. We can give a rigorous argument for why cosine uh, so the ratio itself is approaching one precisely, uh, Jahin, right? The ratio of sine H over H is approaching one. Yes? Good. Wonderful. I hope good. So next guys, is uh, we explain cosine. I hope you understand that uh, limit as h goes to zero of cosine h minus one over h, that happens to equal zero. Yes? And now 
it's it's for the, for the same reason. Now I'm asking you guys possibly something new. I did it with my evening section, but um, on Tuesday we had a short lecture. So tell me please now what's limit as h goes to zero of tangent h divided by h. Okay, Miriam, thank you. Come on, guys, uh, it, there are not a lot of students here, but 22 answers, I would be happy to see. Wonderful, Giovanni. But you should not put question marks, guys. You should be uh, hopefully certain of your answer as you thought of it. Good. And the reason I know, okay, so let's just wait a few more moments, guys. A few more moments. Come on, what's the answer? First of all, you can visualize like the other two, uh, but secondly, you do not have to. Guys, you can do it geometrically from scratch if you want to, you can visualize it. You just have to draw the unit circle and that's a very good exercise. And can you tell me on the unit circle where is tangent? Yes, you can do it completely directly. Where is tangent on the unit circle? And secondly, you can, uh, you can just interpret what's the situation. Very good. The answer is one. Now, why is the answer one, guys? Because I understand what somebody is trying to do. Would anybody tell me what is somebody trying to do here? There is a limit. Not what the answer is, but what is somebody trying to do, please? Write in the comment. It's even more important than the answer. You have this limit. What is somebody trying to do? Derivative of tangent x at x equal to zero. One person answered it immediately, correct. Somebody is trying, guys, you see, all it is just recognize what the formula is doing. Somebody is trying to take the derivative of tangent at zero. And therefore, I don't need to go by this procedure. I know this is the derivative of tangent x where x is equal to zero. And what do we get? We get secant squared of zero because derivative of Tangent is secant squared. Secant squared of zero is one. Do we agree? That's one way to do that without any, and we can do it that directly. Here is the, uh, this is just uh, uh, applying the definition here. I can do it directly. What's the direct way of doing that? Here is, uh... Here is a circle, unit circle, yes? Here. Is the x and y axis. So this is my unit circle. This red part is sign and this green part is cosine yes and this arc is in radians is in radians it's h this is the uh, angle h would anybody tell me do you see where in this picture is tangent 
tangent is the ratio of red to green do you remember and so tell me would anybody uh, like to tell me what to do to find the tangent in this picture i guess not so the tangent in this picture look at it very simply do do i like to divide by what number What's my favorite number to divide by? One. So if my favorite number is to, is to divide by one, I, I create a similar triangle. Do you see? I will take, uh, I will take, I'll draw it here in pink. I will take this. You see uh, this line that is perpendicular to this X axis that is drawn in pink and uh, it's, a line uh, emanating from the x coordinate one. This is x equal one. Yes. And then I can extend this uh, line, the uh, radius, I extend it. And what do I get? I get that this here is tangent. Do you see that? This orange segment is tangent. So it's intuitive that as the blue arc goes to zero, the, the curves and the orange curves start to look more and more alike. Good? Confirm if you understand, guys. And so that means that uh, tangent is not doing too much to the angle if the angle is small. So it's, it means in effect that if you have tangent of a, of a small angle in radians, you might as well omit the tangent. Is it? It's not uh, doing much to the input if the angle is very small. Very good. Next. Tell me please, what is the limit as H goes to zero of secant h minus one divided by h. Okay, thank you to people, Miriam and Humaira. Thank you, Tzvi, Giovanni, Nashin. Come on guys, more. Good, good. So if you're not looking anywhere guys and truly answer uh, of your own, that's amazing. Because what do you have here? This is, what is somebody trying to do here? Would anybody tell, uh, tell me in the comments? As many of you as possible. Tell me what is, some, what is someone's intention in calculating this limit? They're trying to do what? Wonderful. Do you see that, guys? If you recognize that this is the derivative of secant, it takes not much effort because we already know how to take the derivative of secant x at x equals zero. That simply is uh, secant zero, tangent zero, secant of zero is one, tangent of zero is zero, and the answer is zero. Yes? So the answer is zero. So you can right away uh, see that limit. Not hard. Wonderful. Uh, what about minus one? Uh, what do you mean, uh, Francis, minus one? Where do you see minus one? Uh, you, you might... What do you mean? I, I just recognize the, min the minus one, it's, it's really this. So this is secant of zero plus h minus secant of zero divided by h. 
right? I just take this, this entire thing and I recognize the definition of the derivative. That's what happens here. Now guys, please help me with the next problem. Tell me what is the limit as x goes to zero of sine of six x divided by x. Beautiful. So I see a lot of you realize that the answer is six. We can do that in several ways. One of them is, guys, the, what X is doing is not as important as this statement. You see, when I say sine of H over H is one in the limit, I'm saying that sine of a small angle divided by the same small angle is essentially one. So that if I were to place a box here, it's sine of a small angle. So if I place that same box on the denominator, the denominator needs to be the same angle. And I just want to put a six here. With this six, the answer is one. But I inserted a six in the denominator that I never had. So I have to compensate by multiplying by six. And so this is six times one and the answer is six. Clear? You see what I did? I just made it sine of an angle divided by itself. Wonderful. Now help me with this new example. Guys, what about limit as h goes to zero of sine h squared divided by h? that would equal to what? So the answer cannot possibly be H guys, right? Uh, because H is meaningless. H is just a way to speak of something, right? Whereas when I say h is going to zero, I'm just, I'm just saying the angle is going to, or, or some part that, that describes the angle is going to zero. So h does not exist and cannot be part of uh, the limit, right? So the answer is this, guys, look at it. I want to see here an h squared, do you agree? You see this? I really want to see here an h squared. Now, if I have an h squared here, the only way I could achieve that, well, not the only way, but I mean, if I, if I multiply denominator by h and I multiply the numerator by h. So what do I get here? I get the limit of h as h goes to zero. So that is zero multiplied by uh, what happens here is I multiply it by one. Do you see that? So the answer is zero. Clear? You see, it's a limit of a product. Limit of h times limit of sine h squared over h squared. That's good, that's good. All right, guys, what about uh, this limit? Limit as theta goes to zero and here we have sine of six theta divided by sine of three theta. What's the answer? Okay. All right, come on guys, not uh, all of you are answering. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six. 
okay, a bit better. Right, I mean, we want all of us to understand it. Yes, guys? Good. So the answer is indeed two. Do you see why the answer is two, guys? Now, some people solve it this way. Here is why one way that I've seen uh, students solve it time and time again on the exam. So they do this. Limit as theta goes to zero, sine of six theta over sine of three theta. So what they do is this, they say, well, we have sine and sine and two sins, they are canceled. And then we have uh, theta and theta we can cancel. And the result is six divided by three. And the result is two. What do you think of this type of reasoning? The answer is clearly two. Now, this type of reasoning is, well, it's like a, a chiropractic for your grandmother. If she climbs up the stairs and falls down all of them, somehow, if she now becomes a young lady. You understand this is entirely and terribly wrong. There is nothing about the solution that's correct. It means a person doesn't understand what is a function, what sign, what anything is. Now, why they did that work? Why did that produce uh, uh, the right answer? It's, you see what, what's happening here, guys. So when you see this limit, look at, look at this limit. Limit as h goes to zero, sine h divided by h equal to one. What this is saying, guys, what this is really saying is that if the angle uh, to which sine applies is a very small angle, then it's as if sine was not there. You understand? Because denominator is the same as numerator. It's as if sine was not there. So that uh, what, what it, this means is that sine of h is essentially h. And that means that uh, sine doesn't do anything to a small number. Right? Of course, uh, this is not entirely true. I mean, sine does do something even to small numbers, but the thing is you don't notice the change, you understand? If the smaller the angle, the less you notice the change. Obviously, sine is making that angle, if it's in the first quadrant, sine will make the, uh, the, the thing smaller, right? So you give it a small angle, the, the output will be smaller because the angle is that uh, arcing blue curve and sine is that uh, vertical red line. So sine always decreases the, the magnitude of the angle. You see that guys by the picture, sine will decrease the magnitude of the angle. Can you see that? The arc is always longer than the straight line. So sine always decreases the magnitude of the angle, but if the angle is very small, you will not notice that difference. Is it clear? Which means that in the limit, I can ignore sine. So what really happened, I didn't cancel sign, it's just they were not there from, for me in the limit. So what I really thought of is this limit where theta, it's a good strategy, if theta goes to zero, sine of six theta divided by sine of three theta. I saw this limit as simply limit as theta goes to zero of six theta over three theta. Not because I canceled the sign, but because I uh, said it's not there, it's invisible. Right, not algebraic operation happened here. Wonderful. So guys, um, help me with this exercise. Tell me please what is limit as x goes to infinity of x times sine of one over x. Miriam, wonderful. Okay.
I see only five people so far. Come on, guys. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. It's still only half the class, at least that's present. 13. Okay, Francis, so we'll, we'll see it. Let's try, what, what, you see what, what's happening here? Here is uh, the reasoning that you have to try to get through. X is approaching infinity, so X is large. The angle that sine is using is uh, what? Large or small? Sine of the angle, is it large or small? It's very small. So if it's very small, guys, that, that is sine there? Does sine do anything? No. So you might as well say this, look at it. So this to me looks like limit as X goes to infinity of X times one over X, same thing, because sine does not change small angles. So all I do is just, re is just try to read it. You see sine of one over X is uh, not really one over X, right? It's in this case, because X goes to infinity, si uh, sine of one over X is smaller than one over X, but the difference becomes negligible. Understood? And so the answer is X times one over X, which is one. That was one way to solve it. Another way to do it is to, um, it's not fastest way to do it here, but it's very useful way in the future for all sorts of problems, guys, okay? So I'll show you in a moment, maybe a problem that is slightly different and you'll tell me what's the limit immediately. Limit as X goes to infinity of, of what? Limit as X goes to infinity of sine of one over X of a small angle divided by one over X, right? To multiply by X is to divide by one over X. I'm just solving it another way to recognize that this is this limit, I've seen it before. Now this means sine of a small angle divided by a small angle. So I can as well change the uh, labeling and I can say it's the same as H going to zero, sine H divided by H, which is one this way. Do you see why I changed to H guys? There, X is not important, you understand? Uh, what all of those things are speaking about is that we have a sine of a small angle divided by a small angle. Notice I don't say X or H or any letters. The letters are supposed to only help me convey the concept. They're just labels, but they are not, they're tags. They are not the actual thing. You always want to think about what actually is happening. Understood? Exactly, Justin. Sine of X is X and that's a tremendously important property I'll show you. Uh, in the next lecture, I will show you um, how important that property is. It's a property that has been used to measure time. And the measurement of time is tremendously important uh, already in the past, and it is tremendously even more so important in today's life. Okay, so this identity is tremendously important. Good. So the answer here is one. Let me ask you um, another question, guys, just to see if you understand this, the idea of this, okay? Uh, of what's, what's happening here. So could you please uh, try to solve uh, this question? So we have limit as X goes to infinity of the fifth root of X to the power of five plus X to the power of four minus X. Could you tell me what this limit equals to please? I'll give you three minutes. Sorry if it's too short. Okay, Jahin says it's zero. All right.
right, uh, Lixin, it's th thank you for coming. It's too bad that you're going. So Jahin says it's one. What else? What, what else are you saying, guys? You see, one thing is uh, you should not always just try to give me the answer. Try to realize what is this question about. You understand? If you recognize it, uh, I, I have a special video for it. Uh, what are we even doing? Okay. So a lot of what we're practicing is just recognition. If you recognize uh, that one thing I'm trying to convey, all of this thick book looks like uh, one page. So some person, so Zakaria says zero. Some says one, some says zero. Let's see afterwards in a moment what it is, guys. You see, I think you're not asking yourself, what is this limit? What is somebody trying to find in this limit? Yes? One more minute and I'm answering. of what is it. So Jahin, maybe you are on the right track, right? But uh, you have to look at it and say, what is this thing really? infinity no it is not infinity now look at it carefully guys look what uh, this might be limit as x goes to infinity i will factor out uh, x to the five and pull it out so do you see that this is the same as x the fifth root of one plus one over x do you see that Confirm if you see what I did in the step, guys. Very simply, I factored out x to the five and I pull it out of the fifth root. Why not, Maria? Uh, look what, what you have here. Do you see in parentheses? I, I have x to the five. You can see I can factor x to the five in parentheses. 
and I have x to the 5 times 1 plus 1 over x. Do you agree? And then I can pull x to the 5 out, and, I, and the fifth root of x to the 5 is just x. Clear? Can you, can you do that here? Just look at it, guys. Here, pull out x to the 5. Here it is. And what do you have? It's 1 plus 1 over x. And then uh, pull out x to the 5 out of the fifth root. And now I can factor out the x. So what is this? This is limit as x goes to infinity. And here we have x, the fifth root of 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. I don't want that. I, I could do that if, if I uh, desired, but uh, I, there is no point in factoring x to the 4. The, the, the reason I do something, guys, you have to understand, there are many things you can do, but if you understand your landscape, if you understand where something is going, if you recognize, you're able to solve the problem. You understand? So uh, what you have to, you, a lot of you, you train yourself to do what? The answer is 1, 7. And that's not interesting. What you are trying to get is a sort of, view of what it, what things are around. Just give me a second. Uh, one second. Yeah, sorry. You understand? Now, do you recognize what this thing is? Look at this expression. What does it look like? Well, we haven't covered chain rule, Francis. The suffering of chain rule is to come. No? Look at it. One plus something that vanishes to near zero. This is the same as limit as x goes to infinity of the fifth root of one plus one over x minus the fifth root of one, since it doesn't change anything, divided by one over x. Does this look familiar now? Come on, look at it guys and tell me, does it look familiar? And what is that? If it looks familiar, what is that, guys? No. Zakaria, how is it sine x over x? Where do you see sine here? What's happening? X is going to infinity. One over x is going to zero. What is this thing? Look at it again. So it's limit as x goes to infinity, the fifth root of one plus one over x minus the fifth root of one divided by one over x. Now, this, uh, this is a vanishing quantity. This looks like limit as h goes to zero of the fifth root of one plus h minus the fifth root of one divided by h. Does this look familiar? No? No, it doesn't look at all similar to what you're saying, Jane. Guys, <clears throat> what have we been suffering and doing so long? This is what formula? It's a formula that is the what? 
derivative formula of what? Of what function? I mean, you see, you are prime because I, somehow you think we are in this um, trigonometry section, so it must be sine or cosine. Don't think in boxes, right? That's the problem. Uh, we need to try to make it very organic. This is the definition of the derivative of the fifth root of x where x is equal to one. Do you see that? And therefore the answer is one fifth x to the minus four fifths where x is equal to one and the answer is one over five. The answer is one over five. And uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. What's the definition of the derivative? You're not practicing it. It's the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And that means what? It means the definition of derivative of f, the number plus what, a box that goes to zero minus the function at the number divided by the box. And if you realize that you can solve almost every problem in that book in a few seconds. Yes. I teach you to, uh, to the definition of the derivative, not only just to, to make the, you have shortcuts, but you don't understand. I'm trying to teach you the landscape. All right, now help me with the next question. Help me with this one. Tell me what is limit as X goes to one of sine of X squared minus two X plus one divided by X minus one, please. Okay, Mariam, good. And the rest of you? Thank you, Giovanni. Tan, thanks. Thank you, Humira. Thank you, Darul. Junaid, thank you. You see what, what's happening here? This is again, the same question we were just solving a moment ago. This is sine of X minus one squared divided by X minus one. Agreed? And this is very easy. It's just uh, the angle squared that goes to zero divided by the angle. The answer is zero. Help me with this one, guys. Limit as X goes to infinity, X times sine of five over X, please. <clears throat>
Very good. Three people. Angelo, how are you there? I haven't seen you yet. All right, the answer is clearly five, guys. Do you see why five? Because, would anybody tell me how you can get five? Exactly. So the simplest way, I think, is to see that five over X is approaching zero, which means sign is not really doing much to the input. So this is the same as limit where X goes to infinity x five over x and the answer is clearly five now tell me please what is this limit What is that? Thank you, Humira. Zakaria, wonderful. Come on, guys, uh, 22 people, 22 answers. All right, I think you're getting it. 10. The answer is clearly 10 because the easiest way to do it, guys, there are several, obviously, but the easiest is to notice that as theta goes to zero, five theta, Phi theta is essentially, well, phi theta is, uh, is, going to, is going to zero and therefore sine of it is not changing the phi theta much. And sine of two theta is not changing two theta much. So this is the same limit as theta going to zero, phi theta times two theta divided by theta squared, which is 10. Good. All right. Now guys, solve uh, uh, this exercise. As X goes to one, sine of X minus one over X squared plus X minus two. What is that going to be? this one here. Okay, thank you, Miriam.
Come on, guys, you see what we're doing? We're doing uh, sine of x minus one over x squared plus x minus two, please. Thank you, Humira. Come on, guys. It's very good. So far, only three answers. It should be 20 answers. Good, Maria Carla. Five, six. What's happening here, guys? So, very simply, denominator here is x minus one times x plus two, agreed? So the result is one times uh, one plus two, which is one third. You understand how I did it, guys? I factored the denominator and I just group um, I just group this with this and multiply by one over x plus two. So as x goes to one, the ratio of the red circles will approach one. And what remains is one over x plus two, which will approach to one third. All right. Now you are doing this one, guys. Sine of uh, 3x divided by 5x cubed minus 4x. Okay, Mariam, I think. Good. Good, Mariam. Jaheen, wonderful. Let's see. All right. 
Another five people. Uh, Tzvi, uh, you forgot minus, but it's good. All right, good. So what can you do here, guys? Look at it. You might as well ignore the sign. It's as if it's not there because when x goes to zero, sign will not modify anything. So it's really three x over five x to the power of three or minus four x. So I can, I can cross out uh, one of the x's and I have uh, the situation is then three, five over x squared minus four. And as x goes to zero, we are getting three over minus four which is minus three quarters, agreed? Okay, next question. Guys, what is this limit? Limit as X goes to pi over four, one minus tangent X, divided by sine x minus cosine x, please. Okay, interesting. That's very good. Thank you, Tzvi. They're all very uh, almost, right? There is a small, small mistake. Very good. I see a few of you notice what's the answer. So guys, you can just simply write limit as X goes to pi over four. It's one minus sine X over cosine X divided by sine X minus cosine X. And it's very tempting to look at it. You have sine X minus cosine X and numerator is almost the same if you were to multiply by cosine, do you agree? So I multiply uh, numerator by cosine and denominator by cosine to balance. And what do I get? I get limit as X goes to pi over four. Here I have cosine X minus sine X. And here I have, I don't want to bother this. I will write it as cosine X, sine X minus cosine X. Do you agree? You see what I did guys? I just multiplied numerator by cosine and denominator by cosine. I don't want to multiply the cosine of the denominator through the parentheses. I don't need it. I see that I can cancel out this. You see cosine minus sine and sine minus cosine 
they cross out to be minus one. So my uh, limit is the same as limit where x goes to pi over four of minus one over cosine x, which is a limit as x goes to pi over four of, of what? Of, um, of, uh, of minus secant x and secant of pi over four. You remember the triangle guys, here is the triangle. So this is one, one root two. So that, that approaches to minus root two as some of you notice correctly. Good, it's minus root two. Here is another question guys. Please tell me what is this limit? Miriam, wonderful. Two more minutes. Okay, why are the answers not jumping? Jahin, there might be a small mistake.
All right, guys. Uh, so nobody except for one person answered it, right? Let me ask you this. Uh, what does it look like somebody is doing here? Not what the answer is, I don't care the number. What is uh, somebody doing here? Look at it, H is going to zero, correct? If H is going to zero, then sign is not much modifying H, correct? So the limit is the same as limit where H goes to zero of root four plus H minus two divided by H. Yes? And what is this? What is someone doing here? You can, of course, multiply by conjugates and solve and like this, but that's a waste of time. What is somebody doing here? When I do this, what am I doing? Driving. Wonderful. So you have abstract reasoning. Driving. What am I doing when I take this limit? Deriving. Wonderful. Driving what? Well, no, H is just, uh, it just, uh, it's just the limit. What am I deriving? H is not significant here. What am I deriving? Uh, Giovanni, H is not significant. The derivative is at what point and for what function? Look at this thing, guys. This is uh, number, root of number plus h minus, uh, what is this? This is two is just root of the number. Do you agree? Divided by h. What is the function? Well, four is not the function. Four is the number at which I, I take the derivative, but what's the function? You see, you're not writing derivatives frequently enough, guys. If I were to ask you to write something by definition, square root of x, yes, finally, it's the square root of x. You look at this thing and, uh, this, and, you're, and the derivative is of square root of x. So this is the derivative of the square root of x where x equals to four, right? We practice doing the derivatives, guys. Why did we do that? Because we have to recognize back and forth, right? If we, if we see the formula, we know that we can go to the shortcut. It's not just to do things the long way. It's just to, uh, first of all, to have a concept of what the derivative is and then to recognize when you see it. So this is what? This is one half x to the power of minus one half, where x is four, which is one half times one half, which is one quarter. So the answer is one quarter. You're not recognizing the derivative. So if I write f prime of x, look at it. The f is seen here, it's f of x plus h, here is where you see the f plus, uh, minus. Minus f of x over h. Where do you see the f? You see it here. So here we had root of a number plus h minus root of the number divided by h. Here is where you see the function. Are we clear? 
let's now since we, we we don't recognize it immediately you will have to uh, i will give you a few examples and you will tell me what is the function where we're taking the derivative good let's uh, you just have to tell me what's the function so if i have limit where h goes to zero and uh, what I have is five plus h to the power of seven minus five to the seven divided by h. Then what is the function f? f this is the derivative uh, of what is the function f of x, please? F of x is what? Very quickly. Oh, wonderful. Two people. Three. What's the function, guys? It's the input plus h to the seven minus the input to the seven, right? So very simply, you can see it here. The answer is very simply x to the seven. And what is x? So this is this, the derivative of this function where x is equal to, what is x equal to here? Five. Wonderful. And so the, immediately the answer is uh, what? The answer is seven times five to the power of six. Good. You have to recognize what function we're taking the derivative of if we see this formula. What about this one? We still get, we're guessing the function. So uh, I have limit as h goes to zero of three to the x plus h minus three to the x divided by h. What is the function? The function f of x is what? Okay, look at it. Uh, so Francis, you say x to the x? No, it's not x to the x. This is not, uh, you look at it, here is the x. So what's the function? The function is three to the power of x. Do you see that? It's very simple. It's whatever, it, look at it, you just do this and that. So the, the function is, uh, it's whatever it's uh, the input plus h and uh, minus the function at the input. Good. Tell me what is uh, the function here, guys. So if I have limit as uh, h goes to zero and I have here e to the five x plus five h minus e to the uh, 5x, what's the function? e to the 5x, very good. The answer is e to the 5x. Clear? There are just so few things that uh, we, we have, we have knowledge of so very few functions. If you see this limit as h goes to zero of sine root five pi cubed or pi to the power of five, let's say it's like this pi to the power of five plus h. Divided by h. Yes. Divided by h. What is the function?
All right, Francis, uh, at, at several points, uh, but be careful. Only uh, be careful here. What's the function? For that, you just have to see sign of, the, you have the function, the input plus H. You see, all you're focusing on, guys, you just have to focus on the input plus H. Where do you see the input plus H? It's here that you see the input plus H. So you have to write, sine p fruit pi to the fifth plus h. And then this would be minus sine of the fifth root of pi to the power of five. Your sine of pi happens to be zero. This is the full formula if I, if I didn't uh, simplify that other part, do you see it? You can recognize the function by uh, circling the input plus h. If you, if you see, if you make a circle bigger than that, it would be the fifth root of the input uh, of something plus h. You have to circle the something plus h to recognize the derivative. Yes? So this is uh, simply the function is what? The function is sine of the fifth root of x. And uh, x is equal to pi to the power of five. Clear? It's very simple. You just circle this, look at it, it's f, x plus h. This is uh, what you circle and then you have this, this is your function, here it is. Yes, at pi to the power of five. All right, here is your new task. Limit as theta goes to zero of one plus sine theta to the power of one over theta, please. No, it's not minus one. So you need to remember, guys, you remember this limit. What is this limit? Mm -hmm. 
That's an important limit. What is it equal to? Do you remember? Do you remember it may be in this form? Limit as n goes to infinity of one plus one over n to the power of n. Same thing. What is that limit? Yes, it is E. You should look at E, it's a, such an important uh, value. This is E and therefore this is E. Good. So the limit we had over there is limit as theta goes to zero of one plus sine of theta to the power of one over theta. The sine is not doing much, so it's really limit as theta goes to zero of one plus theta to the power of one over theta, which I recognize as E. Here is another way of looking at it. You see, if you have one plus a box that goes to zero to the power of one over the box that you get is E. We spoke about it uh, quite a few lectures when we talked about E to the X. If you do not remember guys, you should review uh, that uh, or stay after class. You can, you can discuss it with me after class if you have energy. Next question is this. Please tell me guys, what is the limit where X goes to zero of E to the power of tangent X minus one divided by X. Very good, Mariam. What's happening there, guys? So I'm waiting. What is this uh, thing about? What does this limit look like? 
as x goes to zero, tangent, is it doing much to the input x or not? No. So if it's not doing much to the input, then simply write limit as x goes to zero e to the x minus one divided by x. Good. And do you recognize what this thing is? What is this thing, guys? Yes, what is this? So what does it look like? Not, what, not only just what something is equal to, but what it was somebody trying to accomplish. Exactly, Jahin. Well, one person sees it. Look at it. There is no reason to keep the X here. Yes, if you want to, you can always, if it's easier for you, write limit as H goes to zero, E to the H minus one over H, which is what? Which is limit as H goes to zero of E to the zero plus H minus E to the zero divided by H. Do you understand, guys? It's just what we just did before. A matter of just recognizing that this is derivative of e to the x at x equal to zero. And this is simply e to the zero, which is one. So please confirm and, uh, uh, by the way, guys, if, if you could, so you're sitting there, what's happening? So uh, what prevents you from seeing it right away, you think? Do you see it once I, once I write it down and you think, ah, yes, I should have thought of that or is it, what is it happening? What do you not see it? I want to see you write. So why, so it should be obvious to you too, guys. Do you see all I'm doing is the same exact thing. You see, I'm, I'm, my trick guys is very is very small. It's just, I, I look at this expression and I ask what, the, what is somebody trying to accomplish? Where they are going with this expression? And I recognize a, a very simple pattern. All right, so let's just uh, for a moment, let's pause. We solve this limit. Mariam, you're good. Kumira, wonderful, Tzvi, good.
Jain derivative uh, at uh, five, that's true. It is the derivative at five, although, well, Uh, yes, uh, I will explain how I did this uh, this thing. So first of all, this limit, I can eliminate uh, theta going to zero. I mean, sine of five theta is really, I can make it simpler for myself and say five theta, yes? I can do that. And uh, I recognize this limit as e to the five. Now, how did I, uh, how do I know that guys? Let's remember uh, the, let's remember the derivative of e to the x. So, derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Yes? And e to the power of zero is one. Agreed? So I can come up with a very a nice uh, limit for e to the x, very important limit. And I come up with it by understanding what this means. Look at it. So if, if the derivative of a function is equal to the function, that means that limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x, is over, over h is equal to f of x. Do you agree? Do you understand what I'm trying to do, guys? You see, what is what is doing well in calculus? What is understanding mathematics here? It's just to interpret what those formulas mean and for them to be significant to you. Hopefully not just in a class, not just in half an hour. So this, the limit just means if h is very small, then this ratio is very like uh, f of x. So that means that f of x plus h minus f of x is essentially the same, over h is essentially the same as f of x, so it's essentially the same as h f of x. Are you clear? Confirm guys if you are with me up to this uh, step. Right? And I'm not just uh, speaking to myself. I want to see lots and lots of confirmations that you're still alive. Yes, and yes, understood guys, right? So you let me know if I can help. So I can then write this formula and this is very important. Is essentially equal to, uh, to one plus H times f of x. Do you agree? Yes, guys, you see how, how I was able to do it? It's essentially um, that. Now, more important than just agreeing is just what does it mean? What does this formula mean? Look at it. You have to stop thinking of X and H and, and those symbols. You have to understand what it means. It means that uh, the function at some number is very similar to one plus the step. The function of the number minus the step. You see, if this is the number, then this here is the number minus the step. You understand what it means? It allows you to walk back and you want to walk to the very safe place where, uh, where the number is zero because at zero it's equal to one, do you understand? So you take many, many small steps back, careful small steps back until you get to zero. That's what gives this formula in a very easy uh, and, and uh, easy to see way. So this is what it means guys. So if I want to evaluate what is uh, e to the x, here is zero and here is X. And then I can divide it into microscopic steps. You see here is the microscopic steps. Here is one step, here is another small step, another small step, another small step. So I'll just be walking like this. All the way until I get to zero. Now I can divide it into N steps. Now, how do I divide it? What is the size of one such step? The size of one such step is X divided by N x divided by n, do you agree? 
So then what happens? Look at it. So then I, I, I have this uh, function f of x equal to one plus the small step f of x minus x over n based on uh, that previous procedure. And I, I, I took one small step back. Now I can take another small step back. So it will be one plus x over n times another one plus x over n. So that's squared f of x minus two x over n. Are you with me still? You understand I'm walking back and the payment, uh, the payment uh, that I have to contribute for walking back, the tax is to multiply by one plus the small step, one plus x over n. Good. And so what do we get? We get at the very end, we get one plus x over n to the power of n, f of x minus n x over n. And f of zero is what? F of zero is uh, is one. So that's just one plus x over n to the power of n. But this is uh, not a true equality unless I, I take limit to infinity. Each step I make, I'm making an error. So if I uh, take the limit and make the steps ever so tiny, then the error vanishes. Do you understand? So the answer is that, uh, the answer is that this function f of x, which is e to the x, is the limit as n goes to infinity of one plus x divided by n to the power of n. Good. Now I can readjust this limit. I can readjust this limit uh, to mean what? So look at it. I have this form limit as n goes to infinity and here I have one plus x times one over n to the power of n. This is equal to e to the x. Now look at this expression guys. Look at this one over n. If I label this as h, then this is one divided by h. Do you agree? If one over n is h, then this is one uh, divided by h. So then uh, I can write this limit in an entirely different form. I can say limit as h goes to zero because one over one over n goes to inf when n goes to infinity. One over uh, well, well, that means that h goes to zero. So it's limit as h goes to zero of one plus x times h to the power of one over h is also e to the x. So we have this form. And I get that by simply, by simply reinterpreting what the limit means. You understand? I'm not doing algebra. I'm not simplifying. I don't focus on the letters. I just look at it. I understand what it is and I reinterpret. That's all. Yes? Let me ask you, so uh, just we have only three minutes left. And so that maybe they are slightly uh, enjoyable for you. Uh, there, there are all sorts of uh, silly questions you see online, right? And then uh, apparently somewhere at MIT, they say they have a very kind of quick uh, uh, intelligence test, right? Answering three questions that are, you can do that elementary. So here is uh, the first uh, question. We have uh, baseball, bat plus ball cost um, cost one dollar ten cents. The bat is uh, uh, is well, let's say this: the bat is one dollar more expensive than the ball. What's the cost of the ball? Let's see, can you, can you answer that quickly? 
Three says ten cents. Robert five. Come on. <laughs> Let's see how quick is your reaction. Only three people answered. Uh, uh, the bat, well, we are interested in the ball, right? The bat costs one dollar more than the ball. Than the ball. What's the price of the ball? Okay. The answer is, of course, five cents. I'm not sure how you solve it, but here is what I do, guys. It's a very simple uh, procedure, right? So. How much does the ball cost? I don't know, so I say X. The only reason I can get anywhere is because I pretend I know something. Do you understand? And you sometimes don't like to pretend that. So the ball costs X, and if the bat costs uh, $1 more, then the bat costs one plus X. Together, it's one plus two X, and uh, that's the price of 110, which means that uh, two X is 10 cents and X is five cents. You can, uh, of course, my brother is much quicker than me. He solves this in a second. I just, uh, you know, good. Well, there are other questions uh, like that. Some of them are slightly harder, but uh, our time is up and you are free to go. I hope you, you, you <laughs> I hope you, you're um, overcoming it, guys. I'm stopping the recording. If you have any questions, uh, stay.